Watch. Bridgerton Season 2 cast reveal their dream DMs. Move over, Mr. Darcy, there's a new Regency era heartthrob in town. During Season 2, Episode 5 of Netflix's Bridgerton, a dripping wet Anthony Bridgerton, played by Jonathan Bailey, emerges from a lake in a white button-up. Sure tanned yes, we're still swooning. If the incredibly sexy scene looked familiar, it's no accident. In a recent interview, creator Chris Van Dusen revealed that the scene was a direct nod to one. Featuring Colin Firth's Mr. Darcy in Pride and Prejudice. In the 1995 adaptation of Jane Austen's novel, Mr. Darcy goes for a swim in a Pemberley Lake and later bumps into Elizabeth Bennet, Jennifer L. There are some images that have been burned into my brain for a very long time, Van Dusen told Entertainment Weekly. And those naturally came out onto the page when I was writing the show. I've definitely talked about my love for that 1995 BBC adaptation with Colin Firth emerging from the lake in his white shirt. That scene of Anthony going in relates to that. It's an Easter egg for fans of the genre. Van Dusen shared a similar sentiment with E! News noting that he thinks Anthony is a version of Mr. Darcy. And Van Dusen revealed that the team took the scene very seriously. We tested that white shirt to make sure it was just the right amount of see-through and clingy enough, he shared with EU. We worked really hard to make that moment magical and memorable. Trust us, Van Dusen, it was indeed magical. But the real question is, who won the wet button-down competition? Now that you've inevitably finished binge-watching season 2, scroll through to learn more hidden secrets behind the Regency-era drama. 1. Beyoncé inspired Queen Charlotte's look. Produced by Shonda Rhimes, the multi-talented mastermind behind shows like Scandal and How to Get Away with Murder, Bridgerton has been celebrated for its diverse casting. For instance, on the show, Guyanese British actress Golda Rocheuvel plays Queen Charlotte of England, who was a real person. Some historians believe the wife of King George III was a descendant of a Portuguese royal family with African ancestry, according to PBS. When I researched Queen Charlotte and found out that she was of African descent, it gave me so much more scope to create her beautiful looks, the show's makeup and hair designer Mark Pilcher told Vogue. I used the silhouettes of the period but in a celebration of her ethnicity, I used locks, braids and afro-textured styles. Her giant afro was in the shape of a Gainsborough wig, but influenced by Beyoncé as Foxy Cleopatra in Austin Powers in Goldmember. Pilcher echoed his comments to Essence, saying, I saw Beyoncé Knowles in Austin Powers Goldmember and that's when I thought, that's what I want. I wanted the biggest afro someone had ever seen. That wig in particular was actually four or five wigs all placed together. So we had the wigs for the ringlets and then the we bought a froze and then straightened them out and reset them on curl sticks and brushed them through so that we would get the best volume of afro, then sewed them on top of each other just to get that beautiful shape. 2. Lady Danbury created her signature look. If you look at Regency men of that period, they would always have a cane and a hat, a Joa Ando, who plays Lady Danbury, told New African Magazine. For me, the fact that she's a widow meant that I wanted her to embody some of the masculine within her feminine. In a way to reflect the particular position of wealth and power that she had within a society that didn't allow a woman a huge amount of freedom. So, I requested a hat, I love a hat. 3. Old Hollywood influenced Lady Featherington's colorful style. At the first fitting of Lady Featherington, Polly Walker, I noticed that her outfits were heavily influenced by the 1950s, Pilcher told Vogue, so rather than giving her straightforward Regency hair and makeup, I looked at pictures of Elizabeth Taylor and Deborah Kerr and amalgamated a 1950s look with a Regency. 4. Eloise and Penelope's bond is even better off-screen. Claudia Jesse, who plays Eloise Bridgerton, and Nicola Coughlin, who plays Penelope Featherington, are friends in real life, according to showrunner. Chris Van Dusen. In the writer's room, we refer to them as Pen Eloise, he told Screen Rant. That's slowly becoming a thing, as the fans of the books tweet and are on Instagram. I think they're using that hashtag a lot. He added, when we saw them, we immediately knew that was Penelope and that was Eloise Bridgerton. I think we have something special with them. 
5. Simon Bassett keeps his late mom close. Simon Bassett, Duke of Hastings, always wore a diamond and emerald encrusted enamel brooch on his lapel during season 1. It belonged to his late mother, who died just after giving birth to him, as seen in a flashback on the show. 6. But first, some makeup. Jonathan Bailey, who plays Anthony Bridgerton, had to have makeup applied to his butt for a sex scene. There is a moment where they go, can we lower the britches? And when I lowered the britches for the first time, they went, can we call in makeup? He said on the British TV show Lorraine. It was just too. Deshineth body. 7. Daphne's wardrobe is fit for a royal. I have 93 dresses, Phoebe Dinavor, who plays Daphne, told Glamour. That's just mad. They're all made from scratch and hand embroidered. And there's six. People making just Daphne's dresses. 8. The reason Daphne wears blue. Daphne always wore blue, that was her favorite color in the beginning, in her innocent stage, costume designer Ellen Mirajnik told BuzzFeed. Her colors changed as she evolved and as she became the Duchess, a married woman with her own ideas. We actually deepened the palette a little bit, made it a little dustier, a bit richer and deeper. 9. How those NSFW scenes really came to be. On Bridgerton, notably in Season 1 Episode 6, Daphne and the Duke of Hastings, Roger Jean Page, get it on in pretty much every room of the house. Anne, intimacy coordinator worked with the pair and other cast members for nude and sex scenes, which showrunner Chris Van Dusen said were choreographed. It was all so that the cast would feel comfortable, and we all we really left it in their hands to take the scenes for as far as they wanted to take them, he told E! News. Those scenes were heavily choreographed, much like an action sequence, like your hand goes here, your leg goes there. They were all really, really rehearsed. Dinavor told E! News. I feel really proud of those scenes, honestly. We worked really hard at making them feel real. I was very safe. I felt very safe. With Roger and an intimacy coordinator. We blocked them out like they were intricate stunts. 10. About that controversial sex scene. In one sex scene, Daphne, having realized she had misinterpreted her husband Simon's comments about fathering children and having recently learned how babies are conceived, takes control of the situation to try to get what she wants. Every aesthetic detail in that controversial moment was planned, and Dinavor had a strong Z in her character's portrayal. We were very clear that there needed to be a show of power, so it's Daphne who takes her own hair out of the braids, and it's Daphne who pushes him away so he can see. Her, Lizzie Talbot, Bridgerton's intimacy coordinator, told Vulture. Phoebe wanted to remove her hair from the braids herself, because it's an empowering moment and so much is tied up in women's hair at that time. That's a very definitive moment that ISNT necessarily rooted in the sexual act, but it is paving the way for 11. Size matters. Daphne and Simon spent quite a bit of time in your bed and other places if a bed is unavailable at that opportune moments. The crew faced the challenge of making sure Paige, who is believed to be 5 foot 11, did not fall off the reduced sized Regency beds. One of the interesting things about Bridgerton was that so many scenes we did involving beds were on beds of Regency size, Talbot told Vulture. That was honestly one of our biggest challenges. Rig being as tall as he is, is not really suited to a Regency sized bed, lengthwise or even widthwise when there's two people on it. So we had to work really hard to make sure that if there's ever any rolling action, which happens quite a lot in these scenes, that they didn't accidentally roll off the bed. She added, that was a real issue. On nearly every bed that we had. 12. A little rain never hurt anyone. The cathartic rained out party scene that took place at the Hastings courtyard was actually filmed indoors on a soundstage, which allowed the crew to control the volume and temperature of the water, and also allowed it to drain properly without flooding the set. We had a huge tank underneath to collect the water, because you can't just rain in a studio and have it just go everywhere. It's got to be properly collected, set. Director Gina Cromwell told BuzzFeed. So there was an enormous range of pipes and things going on. I mean, from my point of view, I was just involved with making sure that there were flowers, always flowers, and that there was food and pretty things like that. 
but I know that from the point of view of the audience, they were, hopefully, fooled into thinking that it was actually an outside set. 13. Blast from Another Past The on-screen version of Daphne's rival Cressida, played by Jessica Madsen, was based on the snobby Nellie Olson from Little House on the Prairie. Pretty on the outside, the show's makeup and hair designer Mark Pilcher told Vogue, but mean on the inside. 14. Marina always keeps an eye on her lover. On Bridgerton, Marina Thompson, Ruby Barker, arrives at the Featherington's home secretly pregnant with her and her lover's child. She typically wears a lover's eye pendant. That's just to symbolize that she has a lover that nobody knows, John Glazer, one of the show's costume designers, has said. Usually, the miniatures wear up to the person, so people knew who they were, but they wouldn't display them. She has an eye, so she's the only one who knows who her lover is. 15. Revealing Lady Whistledown During the season 1 finale, the identity of gossip newsletter writer Lady Whistledown was finally revealed. It was so much fun, Coughlin told Variety. We had to film that in the middle of COVID. I had to be super, super secret. I had to be flown over from Ireland and tested and tested and tested and do the fitting. It was hyper secret, I couldn't let anyone know I was there or what was going on. But it was so much fun to film that. 16. Little Gestures In an interview with E! News, Golda Rocheuvel made a small gesture in season 2 that was meant to call back to Bridgerton's first season. Specifically, when selecting Edwina Sharma, Karithra Chandran, to be the diamond of the season, the queen lifts the debutante's chin the exact same way she did for Daphne. Bridgerton, Phoebe Dinavor, just that physical moment of lifting her chin, she shared. I did exactly the same thing with Daphne. For the actress, this small gesture helped her see how it all connected.